Oh, welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we're doing a brew day. It's coming up to Christmas, you're going to have time over your Christmas holidays to get some beers on. So what we're doing is showing you two batches of beer. We're going to do an Imperial Stout and a new advanced top product, American Pale Ale. We're using the Beacon Brewster 40 and the Brew Monk. A uh, couple of observations that we noticed that um, the brew monk's actually a little bit noisier heating up, but it does heat up faster and seems to maintain its heat just that little bit more once we paused it in comparison to the beacon. Um, visually, I quite like the fact that the beacon's uh, display is smack bang in the middle and there isn't a tap in the way that has it offset. And I also like the fact that you've got the, the separate graduation as opposed to the graduation being built into the pipe. But look, both great systems, both great value. So what we're going to do is we're going to mash in and get the brew day on the go. We're revamping our um, all grain brewing recipe kits at the moment and we're going to put some nice new helpful sheets into them. Um, Mad Cow Stout all grain kit. Take you through the ingredients, best deal, roast barley, chocolate and light crystal. 7.73 kilograms of malt, which is a monster malt mash um, for one of these systems, but it'll cope with it well. Um, Aurora as a bittering hop, I'm a big fan of Aurora, it's, it's a Slovenian hop, very clean, very sort of subtle um, flavour which I really really like, a uh, good basis to, to build a backbone of bitterness into your beer. And then a real favourite of mine and probably underutilised in uh, stouts but Centennial, beautiful hop. Fermented with uh, clean West Coast ale yeast, BRY97. Get the mash on with the first one. That's, well, look, like, I think we called that well with three times the strike water to the mash, given the sheer size of the, the mash there, so. Next recipe we're doing, I can see Kuhn's named this Super Citra. We just put this together recently. It's the showcased advanced hot products, American Pale Ale recipe. Um, and the idea is to allow the new advanced hot products to shine. So we're using Lipomax, we're using Incognito, and we're going to use Spectrum. It's just over five kilograms for this recipe. We've put in 15 litres of strike water, and we're going to add the uh, grains now in mashing. mash on. We did a video on how to calculate your mash and sparge volumes if you need to refer to that for assistance. Mash times complete. We've been using the pump to recirculate here and what we're going to do is lift the grain basket up and then sparge from the top. Sparging is just rinsing the grains and to try and get the residual sugars out of it there into uh, your pre-boil volume so I think this will be great just because I like citra and these new advanced top products have got a big punch of flavour, so if you're at home you could use uh, another vessel, heat some water up in it, you could use a kettle, um, it's, it, look, you could have a sparge water heater. We're in the Get A Brewed showroom which is also a brewery, so we have hot water tanks, large scale ones that have warm water sitting at all times, so all I'm going to do is use this 5 litre jug and measure out my sparge water, so once I get this up to the next level here on the stout, we'll start sparging to achieve our pre boil volume. The top plate is on, it's left on obviously so that it helps the sparge water to disperse evenly throughout the bed as it rinses down through the grains. So it's so kind of staggered the mash time or the mash in time a few minutes apart to allow me to finish doing the sparging with this before we start with, with this one. So um, like a brew day can take anything from four hours to six or eight hours depending on, on what you're doing. and you know, what style of beer and how particular you want to be with step mashes and things, but enjoy the brew day. Like, you're on your Christmas holidays, you're off, you're, you're making beer that you're going to enjoy at the start of the year. You know, don't get too caught up on how long you're there. Yes, you want to mash for 60 minutes with these recipes. If you go a few minutes over, it's not the end of the world. What we want to do at this stage now is change this and start heating the wort up inside here to bring it to a rolling boil. So we hit manual and then 
60 minute boil timer and then start. What, what this will do now is it will start to raise the temperature in here, the boiling temperature, and then once it hits boiling temperature, it will start counting down. So 60 minute boil on both. It's worth starting to heat now during the sparging process just to fast track your brew day. Always make use of your time in a brew day. So while you're waiting on the sparging finishing and the grains being rinsed, um, what we're doing now is getting the fermenters ready. So you hear the expression, don't fear the foam from um, the no rinse sanitizer. So we've got loads of those inside. So today we're going to use the Firmzilla all rounder 30 liters to ferment the APA just because we're, we're going to try doing pressurized fermentation, pressurized transfer. So that's going to allow the hops to really shine. And then we're going to use one of the Brewmonk stainless steel conical fermenters to ferment the Imperial Stout in. So we've got the both of them cleaned here, full of sanitizer, just make use of your time while you're waiting on the mash and the sparge finishing. So Kuhn has very kindly lifted out the grain basket for me. Just to summarize, we've got to just below 30 liters there. So your pre-boiled volume target for this is 29 and a half liters. We're bang on where we want to be. We've taken the grain out. If you mash in seven kilograms of malt into 21 liters of strike water, you're going to have an absorption loss of one liter per kilo of the seven that went in, which leaves you a 14. So if you're aiming for 29 and a half, you sparge the difference between 14 and 29 and a half. Um, if you find that you're listening to the drips coming out and it's starting to slow down and you think you need to add an extra liter, it's not the end of the world to do that if, it's, if it continues to run after you took it out. So that's the sparge complete. You can see we're sitting at 91.4 degrees, just waiting to hit the 100 before um, we do our 60 minute boil. If you look here at the hops our guys are actually adding the times for you to make things easy so 60 minutes that means added at the start of the boil so once the boil starts and then those times work back so when it says five minutes that means you added five minutes before the end of the boil so hops added in this recipe at 60 and five minutes we add the Werflock tablet 10 minutes before the end of the boil and then after the boil is complete we want to kill it as quickly as we can the super citra APA using advanced hop products has got a couple of products that you wouldn't be maybe too familiar with. So here we have Incognito, uh, Whirlpool edition, incredible um, product. We're really, really pleased with this and it's been doing incredibly well. And then we have the liquid dry hop, which is Spectrum. Now, as you can see, both of these are, you know, this is almost like a really thick brown paste. And this is, this is flowable, but it is um, it's very sticky and gloopy and it's not pleasant stuff to work with. A little tip for you is just to put them into a, a hot water bath. We'll allow the incognito to sit in that there for a short period of time and it'll make it flowable, makes it dead easy for adding to the kettle. It's much easier with the brewery in the background, isn't it? <laughs> If you look in here, you can see that we've got a nice rolling boil just about to kick off. And um, whenever you get that, you want to lift the lid off because you don't want to create DMS in the beer. Part of the reason why you boil the wort is to obviously pasteurize the wort, suitable for the yeast to be added, but it's also to boil off um, DMS and impurities. So. 11 minutes off the end of the boil, so 10 minutes before the end of the boil, usually what I do is add the Werflock tablet. Werflock, Protoflock, it's a, it's a copper fining and um, it's used to um, help with the clarity and the protein break in the beer. See we're getting near the same stage in this one as well. There's a five minute hop addition with this so five minute hops is ready and in this one we're going to add the incognito. Incognito is a whirlpool addition but it works exceptionally well with a little bit of hop pellet so we're going to use a little bit of the citra lupo max. There's two citra hop tea bags in it uh, one's just the very small 5 grams and one's a 45 gram. Um, so we'll, we'll keep the 5 gram one out and then we'll pop the hop back in. And as with all of our hot bags, you just um, decompress the air out of them and then run your finger across the seal and they're resealed and then pop them back into the fridge. With it being warmed up there, it's changed the 
viscosity of it and it'll make it that a little bit easier to add. Pop in So the stout um, calls for the centennial five minutes before the end of the boil so just take the hot tea bag out and drop it in and then I give that a little mix. I'll lift one of these out do you see? So the hot tea bags that we do are they're very robust and strong and there's room there, there's plenty of room for the hot pellets to disperse but the benefit of this is that you're not getting all the hot sort of, um, I'm trying to think of the word the solids and the fibres in the, the actual brew and then that can lead to you having blockages in the transfer and the cooling doesn't happen with these and that's why we promote them in the Get A Brew recipe kits. Copper chiller, uh, submergible chiller, we're just going to pop that in and then what we'll do is uh, we'll use the hose lock fittings and connect up cold water in one end and uh, warm water out the other end. Popped on uh, the recirculating arm and I've just switched the pump on temperature was reading 21 before I did that and I knew by just you know you can feel it's nice and cold here and then you can feel the extra warmth here so by recirculating now what we're doing is we're getting a true reading on that so the reason we're doing that is so that the fermentation temperature is precise when it goes into the fermenter you don't want to transfer at 40 degrees and put yeast in you're going to end up with problems so um, little tip get things recirculating or use a temperature probe to check top and obviously the probe that's on this will be checking the bottom. I've taken a sample of wort using the tap into the trial jar, dropped the hydrometer in and we've got a gravity reading of 1054 which is actually bang on what I wanted for this beer. So, so we're going to start the um, transfer just checking that's all set up right. Incognito is stuck to the walls of the all-in-one system. If you add a little bit of hot pellets, it helps prevent that. This isn't the worst that I've seen there. A little bit of pellets, whether that be BBC or Lipomax, that'll help break that up and dissolve much better. Knife for cutting open or scissors, whatever you're doing, and the packets, sanitize both. Um, and sprinkle them in on top. You'll notice that I'm using two packets of yeast in this particular recipe for the New England. That's specific to this strain. The pitching rate just needs to be a little bit higher to work. And also you can consider yeast nutrition, whether that be yeast life extra or servomyces or even a little bit of zinc. But it's good to have um, yeast nutrition in your beers as well. Fermenting under pressure, I think we've covered this before, fast lager video that we did. It speeds it up, you can work at higher temperatures and you can sort of aim to work between 12 to 15 PSI. It just speeds everything up and because you're able to go at higher temperatures and the pressure, the pressure suppresses the esters a little bit with the yeast. In this particular one, all we're going to do is attach a two bar pressure release valve with a ball lock cap and allow the active fermentation to build the pressure up. Everybody's system is going to differ. I've covered this before. The efficiency ratings that we set our recipes at are at 75. Efficiency could be anywhere between 60 and 80 depending on what system you have. So we have ended up with 25 litres at 1054 starting gravity. That's exactly what we wanted. And the little bit that's left is just discarded during cleaning. Next beer. So we wanted to chill the APA first. Um, because of the advanced top products and the fact that we wanted it into the fermenter first. So the Imperial Stout has dropped in temperature whilst that's chilling naturally. Um, we didn't have the hose connections to allow us to chill both at once. So what we're gonna do now is we've popped the chiller out. Kuhn's popped my little bit of no-rinse sanitizer around the copper chiller before we submerge it because it's literally on pasteurization level as it is. We'll pop that in, get this chilled, and then get it transferred to the fermenter. <laughs> 1072, we wanted 1071, a little bit over. Yeah, I'm not going to complain about that. We're going for fermentation temperature in this particular recipe, 19 degrees. You can see that we've reached just under 24 here. Because this is steel and it's so cold this time of the year, I'm going to transfer this now without, we've turned the water off. Have we? Yeah, so we turned the, the cold water off on the immersion chiller. We started to do the transfer using the pump just because it gives us a bit of scope 
this is still the steel will cool the wort down as it goes in so aiming for a 19 degree fermentation temperature so we're going to do the transfer now it's started once that's complete we'll pit the yeast Uh, West Coast ale yeast, really clean, neutral ale yeast, which is perfect for stouts in my opinion. So, actually sitting at 21 degrees, so happy with that, that'll drop to 19. So the little clips there, there's a silicone ring inside the lid there, it just gets it down nice and snug. We'll pop the airlock on. Um, we brewed this on Thursday afternoon. It's Monday afternoon. <laughs> yeah, can nearly remember what day it is. I've been checking this earlier today, so you can see it's held the pressure sitting there at the minute, just under 12 psi. Now, what I'm wanting to do is add the Lupomax dry hop and the Spectrum uh, dry hop as well. So I'm going to depressurize really quickly and then um, add the Spectrum and the um, Lupomax, and then I'll recarbonate, adding a bit of top pressure. Spectrum is what would be described as like a hot paste. <laughs> We've got ourselves a Lupomax hot tea bag, and you'll have watched the videos before where we show you how to rehydrate the hop tea bag. The reason we use hop tea bags is obviously to um, minimize the mess in the fermenter and during the brew process, but by making a hop tea, what you're really trying to do is make sure that the hop bag itself is sterilized. So um, give this a little bit of a mix, try not to spill too much of it around myself. We're happy that that's submerged and then we'll just pop that, pop the whole thing in. So that's in there. And then the liquid spectrum, you can see here. Um, we have, we sell these in 50 mil. I'm actually using 25 mil on this particular occasion. What I've done is I've added a little bit of wort um, just to, to mix it and give it a really, really good shake to ensure that it, it's flowable. And then we'll just pop that straight in. So look, we're using a larger CO2 tank because we're in the, the brewery here at the moment, but um, put the CO2 on. We're gonna bring this up to 12 PSI. So, so with the little blast of CO2 there out of the CO2 tank, that's put us back up to the same pressure that we had before we dry hopped. Now look, you don't need a large CO2 tank at home. Obviously, you're going to have a 2 kg tank or something, you know, slightly more home orientated. Because of the nature of this video, the way we've shot it, we would have liked to have shown you to have got a carbonation cap and put it on top of a Coke bottle, equalize the pressure between the two, and then just use two um, ball lock disconnects and a bit of beer line to transfer it under pressure. Or if you use the Farmzilla starter kit, and it's got the yeast harvesting container, you can mix your hops in that container, back flush it with CO2, and then screw it on and open the dump valve, and that will allow everything to, um, to take place. We have added this at 1020, um, because Spectrum works exceptionally well at um, the last sort of 15% of firm active fermentation. Now, as with all advanced top products, they play really well together, and um, so we've used Lipomax and Spectrum as a dry hop. And uh, not forgetting that we've had Incognito in the Whirlpool as well. So we've completed the dry hop on the APA. And we're gonna pop it back on again, the Ferminator back on again. Key thing to mention with the Ferminator is we brewed this on Thursday afternoon. It's Monday afternoon now. Um, the precision in the temperature control has allowed the fermentation to be very quick and consistent and healthy. Like um, the stout is in here that we'd brewed. You can see that we brewed it on the Brewmonk stainless steel conical fermenter and uh, checked the gravity in it earlier on today and it's sitting at 1020. So 
almost complete and um, we'll give that another day and then we'll put that on the crash kill before we get ready for packaging so double brew day doing the APA and the Imperial Stout using the advanced top products in this one we've did that dry hopping process today give that another day until fermentation is complete and then we'll start to drop the temperature so that's our brew day shows you how quick and how easy it is with the right equipment especially with these new ferminators if you have any questions about brewing these kits don't hesitate to reach out to us thanks so much for watching and until next time happy brewing